Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, also known as Good Shepherd Sunday because our Gospel reading uh, is focused on the theme of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And indeed, um, the Good Shepherd is the guise in which Jesus is um, presented in some of the very earliest depictions of Jesus in Christian history. When I was in Rome, gosh, uh, I think it was in 2011, I went down into the catacombs of Calixtus to see one of the earliest depictions of Jesus, a beardless Roman-looking youth with a lamb on his shoulders. So uh, the picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is amongst the very earliest depictions of him in the whole of Christian history. And perhaps you can look it up on the internet to see what I mean. shepherd, following that great theme of God being presented as Israel's shepherd in Israel's history, let us pray. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. We say together, Almighty God, God to, to whom, whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. We shall now sing the Gloria together. Go. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our readings this morning are read, respectively, by Ken Lease, Anthony Rich, and Joe Hands. And these readings will be followed by the homily, which will be delivered by the Reverend Pam Smith. The first reading is taken from the Book of Acts, Chapter 2, reading from verse 42 to the end. Many were baptized and were added to the community. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and would distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is taken from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, reading from verse 19 to the end. For it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit? if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it. But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you are called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself 
to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Here ends the lesson. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus uses figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is a new preaching situation for me. I usually rely on the reactions of the congregation to encourage me, or to betray if I'm going a bit off track. And especially those who do encourage me by making eye contact and smiling when they agree with something I've said. But like all of us, I'm having to get used to new ways of doing things and new ways of being the church. On first hearing, our situation at the moment, in lockdown and isolated from each other, couldn't be much less like the one that's described in our reading from Chapter 2 of Acts. This describes the very early Christian church living in community and sharing everything in common. And when I saw the reading, I was reminded of the way a much older member of my first church community dismissed this as a model for our Christian communities by snapping, They were enthusiasts. We are just ordinary Christians. And in a way, in a, in a way he was right. To be fair, I don't know of many Christian communities other than monastic ones which share to this extent. But most churches do do most of the things described, except perhaps for witnessing wonders and signs. 
So there might be something for us to learn, even in our current situation, about being the church. How do we continue as a Christian community, just an ordinary one, in such extraordinary times? What does it mean to be church when the church is closed? Well, it's hard to be a congregation when we're not allowed to congregate. But as Christians, we are still part of the church. Made up of believers in Jesus across the centuries and all around the world. The church described in the reading from the Acts of the Apostles is united and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so is our church. We are all included. God hasn't forgotten about us because we can't get into our buildings. We are part of something much bigger and he still has plans for us. The letter to the Hebrew church says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. And I love that image of being surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, some of whom I've met, many of whom I haven't, but all of us united in our faith in Jesus. The Spirit can inspire us to live a life that pleases God, wherever we are and whoever we're with. We can do many of the things on this list, break bread, eat at home with glad and generous hearts, perhaps more glad and more generous because food is harder to get hold of at the moment for some people than it usually is. And we can pray for the bereaved and those who are suffering and we can also praise God and give thanks for the many people who are working to look after them and for those people who are working on new treatments and vaccines and all those who are performing essential roles in the community. In chapter 1 of his letter to the Roman Church, St Paul says, For I am longing to see you, so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Paul was writing to a church that he had never visited. His longing to see its members was so that he could share his faith in person, encourage others but also be encouraged. He was currently only able to offer encouragement by letter and it didn't feel like enough to him. I'm sure that many of us, if not all of us, are longing for the day when we can see each other again and meet together as a church. But in the meantime, let us do what we can. Let us give thanks for each other and pray for each other. Because even very ordinary Christians can do that. Amen. We say together... The creed whereby we declare the faith of Christ's Church. We believe in, in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now have our prayers of intercession, which this week will be led by Roger Hands. In, in these difficult and challenging times, it being Good Shepherd Sunday, something to lift the gloom, an excerpt from the month of May from the Shepherd's Calendar by John Clare, who lived 200 years ago in a village like ours. The youth who leaves his corner stall betimes for neighbouring village school, while as a mark to urge him right the church spires, all the way in sight, with cheerings from his parents given, starts neath the joyous smiles of heaven. And sawns with many an idle stand, with book bag swinging in his hand, and gazes as he passes by on everything that meets his eye. Young lambs seem tempting him to play, dancing and bleating in his way, with trembling tails and pointed ears. They follow him and lose their fears. He smiles upon their sunny faces and fain would join their happy races. The birds that sing on bush and tree seem chirping for his company. The intercessions for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Good Shepherd, your sheep need protection. So much in the world threatens to harm or destroy them. They are oppressed, exploited, unjustly treated, prey to conflict and violence. We pray for all those suffering in silence from violence and abuse, even at home. We ask that the world may know life in all its fullness. In your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, your sheep need good pasture. So many in the world do not have enough to eat. Their lives are narrowed by need as they struggle to exist. We pray for all those who are struggling, especially in these difficult times, and all those who help them with accommodation and food supplies. We ask that the needy may know life in all its fullness. In your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, your sheep need healing. So many are sick and in pain incapacitated by illness, sorrow and anxiety. Their journey through life is hard. We pray for all those suffering from illness, especially the COVID-19 virus, and their friends and family who suffer with them, and the doctors and nurses who care for them. We pray that those in trouble may know life in all its fullness. In your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, your sheep need guidance. So often they do not know the way they should go, but stumble along blindly, not listening for your voice. We pray for guidance for the church and its leaders, for the medical experts and advisors, and the government and prime minister leading us along this unknown path. We pray that we may know life in all its fullness. In your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, your sheep need saving, so often they stray from you and get lost, needing your costly forgiveness, needing you to risk all and fetch them back. We pray for ourselves. We pray that we may know life in all its fullness. In your love and mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of the Good Shepherd, who lay down his life for the sheep, Amen.